Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. We're going to mix it up a little bit and take a look at three different versions of the Brooks Glycerin 20. We have the GTS version, the Stealth Fit Edition, and the original. The only one we're missing is the Stealth Fit GTS, and we'll explain all of that here in a second. Let's run with it. Now before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Brooks Glycerin got a complete refresh this year, now on its 20th version. If you're not familiar, the Glycerin is one of Brooks' most highly cushioned models meant for road running. Now, we do get four different versions this year. I have three of them here in front of me. The first one is the GTS edition, the go-to support version. They do this with a lot of their shoes. Essentially, they'll add some guide rails on the lateral side and on the medial side, providing the stability version of the original shoe. The next version we have is the Stealth Fit edition, which basically has a knit upper and a relatively similar midsole. They also have a GTS version with the Stealth Fit Upper, that's the one shoe I don't have here. And then the last is the original, has the standard midsole, standard upper, and is probably the version most people will go to and are familiar with. As far as stats go, I believe each of these editions will cost $160. And with regard to stack height, it's going to be 34 millimeters in the heel with 24 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. Now that is different for the Stealth Fit, both original Stealth and GTS. They will have a 12 millimeter drop, and I'm not sure, I think it'll probably be 34 in the heel and 22 in the forefoot. Uh, Brooks didn't have any exact numbers. I called them up and they weren't able to provide me exact stack heights. I did some digging and that's how I got the 34 uh, and 24 stack height. But I do know based on the tech sheet that the Stealth Fit will have a 12 millimeter drop while the original and then the original GTS will have the 10 millimeter drop. Now with regard to weight, the GTS goes down about 0.2 ounces. It goes from 10.7 now to 10.5. The Stealth Fit weighs 9.4 for the original and then the Stealth Fit GTS is 9.7. Then the original version goes down about a tenth of an ounce, goes from 10.2, now down to 10.1. Taking a look at the upper, we're gonna compare the original to the GTS, mainly because they feel like the same upper. They look almost identical, because I think they are identical. I actually tried running with one on each foot. Probably not the healthiest thing to do, but it was fun to try out, uh, and they felt pretty much exactly the same. I really couldn't notice any differences. Now, with regard to the feeling, it feels pretty much like your typical Brooks experience. Very comfortable, keeps you very much locked in, very similar to the Ghost and then the Adrenaline GTS. You have a fair amount of breathability. It's pretty much average, kind of that dual layered engineered mesh approach. Uh, the back of the shoe has an average amount or decent amount of padding, I'll say. Very comfortable, no heel slip or anything like that. And they do get a flat lacing system with an average amount of padding in the tongue, which is non-gusseted. The tongue feels, again, very similar to the Ghost, which is over there in the corner and then the adrenaline gts very similar very familiar brooks upper experience moving on to the stealth fit version this is going to be a woven material that's going to provide a much more snug much more sock like feel compared to the original upper now i will say it's not that elastic if elastic at all it's very secure doesn't have much give to it so it does keep your foot really well contained it's fairly comfortable you do have a little bit of stretch in the toe box however the tongue is extremely stretchy and i think is what gives this shoe a little bit more of a unique feel so you just have a lot of elasticity here it stretches quite a bit it connects directly into the upper so it fades from this woven fabric to this knit tongue if you will and then that material creates this ankle and achilles collar area i didn't really notice it at all it didn't bother me i think it's more decorative than anything else because the the heel um, internal heel counter provides most of the structure to the shoe so i think maybe this keeps debris from falling in but in my mind it feels more decorative than anything else and with regard to the lacing system on the Stealth Fit, it's quite interesting. You have two pieces of rope that extend down the sides of the tongue. They call this an external lacing frame. Then the laces wrap through these pieces of rope on the outside of the upper, pull together, and that's how you get your fit. That way, there's no holes in the upper, and it's a very seamless, consistent feel because the laces don't have to go through the upper itself. Now, I will say, because the tongue is so elastic and it, it is very thin, I had a hard time getting a great fit, or at least compared to the original version, because you just get a little little bit of heel lift because the tongue is a little bit elastic so no matter how tight you tie the laces the tongue just has a little bit of give at the top and I was able to kind of get a little bit of heel lift not an absolute deal breaker but if I had to choose for performance I'm going with 
the original just because I felt like I was able to get a much more secure fit. The padding in the back of the ankle and Achilles area is moderate. It's definitely not minimal, um, but because of the elastic nature of the tongue and then how thin it was, you do get a little bit of lace pressure if you try to really secure it down. Um, I wasn't able to get like the best performance fit. Still comfortable, it worked, it was adequate. It just wasn't ideal compared to the original version. In my opinion, I will say if I wanted to lifestyle these shoes or just wear them out around, I picked the Stealth Fix. I think it just looks so much cooler than the original. However, if you're going for performance running, which is what most people I think pick these shoes for, I would use the original just because it has a slightly better lockdown. And now for the fun part, we get to talk about the midsole, more importantly, DNA Loft V3, which Brooks is calling their softest midsole ever. This is completely different from V2. It has a whole different manufacturing method because this is a nitrogen infused foam. This was first debuted on the Brooks Aurora BL, kind of a futuristic looking shoe. Essentially, they take a block of foam, dip it into a pressure cooker, inject nitrogen and all these other gases. It expands, creates all these small cellic structures. It's gonna be lighter, more bouncy, and more importantly, more durable compared to conventional EVA foams. You're going, to get a, you're going to get a much more soft, much more lively experience compared to what you're used to from Brooks. And starting with the neutral versions, we do have a slight difference. The Stealth Fit and the Stealth Fit GTS have both a 12 millimeter drop, while the original and the original GTS have a 10 millimeter drop. So even though these are both neutral and then the GTS shoes are both GTS, uh, they do have slightly different drops with a two millimeter difference. Now, 10 and 12 is definitely on the higher end of things when it comes to drop. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. But as far as the overall cushioning experience, uh, I thought it was quite pleasant, much, much more lively compared to some of the uh, EVA based foams. I think uh, DNA Loft V2 was like a mixture of rubber, air, and then EVA foam. And that's how they got the DNA Loft. And now this is going to be that super critical nitrogen infused foam, which is actually better than the previous versions. It's not just marketing, it's actually better in my mind. And it should be more durable. We'll see how it, it kind of pans out as we get more miles in these shoes. But it does feel much softer underfoot and more lively. Now, it's not as lively as the Brooks, Brooks Aurora BL, that kind of weird looking kind of concept shoe if you will mainly because you have a lot more rubber under here and i think that kind of dulls down the experience um so i would just keep that in mind but you are going to get a slightly more softer bouncier uh, and i think in my mind pleasant ride compared to the brooks glycerin 19. moving on to the gts version it runs very similar to the neutral version we do get some guardrails or guide rails as they call them on the lateral side and then on the medial side these kind of keep your foot aligned in running the correct direction in my mind i believe the medial side guide rails can be a little bit more significant Significant. You do notice it. It does wrap under your foot. So you do know it's a little bit less soft compared to the original just because you have an extra layer of foam uh, underneath your heel, or at least a little bit more dense um, support, if you will. So it runs again very similar. I went running with the GTS version and the neutral one on each foot, and it feels very, very similar. The guide rails are nice because they kind of disappear if you don't need them. So if you're not hitting them or if you're not kind of leaning into them, they really kind of disappear. Um, it is slightly, and I mean slightly less soft than the neutral version just because because again, the guide rail on the medial side, kind of they wrap under your foot just a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it is a very, very similar experience to the neutral setup. So I was happy with the guidance. It's not a true max stability shoe. If you do need that, if you need the posting and things, I'd probably go in a different direction. However, it does provide a nice level of guidance with a very similar feel to the original, a very non-intrusive stability experience. So overall, I'm really happy with the updates here to this new nitrogen-infused DNA Loft V3. This midsole is a big step in the right direction, and I think if you're a fan of the glycerin, this will be a big upgrade. Now, this isn't the most cutting-edge foam, and if you've tried other running shoe foams that are a little bit lighter, softer, and bouncier, this might not be a huge shock to you, but if you're used to the more traditional Brooks experience with their DNA Loft V2 and other EVA bases that might be a little bit more firm, I think this will be a big change. Moving to the outsole, we do get quite a bit of rubber coverage here. The pattern is going to be the same across all four different versions. So no matter what Brooks Glycerin you get, it is going to be this same uh, type of outsole. Now, as far as the traction goes, I didn't have any issue. When you have this much rubber, typically you don't have um, any problems, and that was the case for me. I will say the lugs are going to be slightly smaller compared to the Ghost and the Adrenaline, and it feels to be a little bit more hard compared to the Brooks Ghost. So in conclusion, I think Brooks made the right updates here. They brought the glycerin into the modern age. The new DNA Loft V3 supercritical midsole is a whole new technology, provides a different experience than its predecessor. And if you're a fan of the glycerin, I think you'll be a fan of this update to move in the correct direction. Now, I wish they would make it a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit more bouncy. I think they have some tweaking to do with the midsole, maybe just kind of change the rubber um, because it wasn't as, I guess, fun as the Aurora BL. But I think this is a big upgrade here. Now, with regard to 
to the Stealth Fit, it was okay. It wasn't great for performance running. I'm definitely going with the original because it had a little bit of heel lift. I wasn't able to get the best fit. And that, for a lot of knit shoes and single upper shoes, you really have to have the perfect foot size for it. And for me, it just wasn't perfect. So for performance running, I'm probably going with the original. Um, if I want a little bit of support, I'm going with the original GTS. And again, they do make a GTS with the Stealth Fit. But overall, I think Brooks is making some big, big updates here. It's probably the best glycerin ever just because it just feels really nice underfoot. It doesn't feel like your typical EVA foam experience. Nothing earth shattering. It's just kind of some, some good steps in the right direction. I think they're going to start to dial it in, hopefully bring the weight down and make things a little bit lighter, bouncier, and more fun. But overall, I think, again, if you're a fan of Brooks, I think this will be a big, uh, big try for you. Well, that concludes my review. Let me know down in the comments which version you would want to try and what kind of other foams you want to see from Brooks. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Writing Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.